What's up YouTube? Welcome back. We finally have it. Winchester 400 Legend ammo has landed today. So for anybody that doesn't know what the 400 Legend is, it's the upgrade to the 350 Legend pretty much. Let's just say that. So the 350 Legend was kind of popular according to Winchester and they wanted to do more with it. So they went ahead with the 400 Legend. Now this is a 40 caliber slash 10 millimeter projectile getting pushed out of a real big chunk of brass here. So we can put a ton of powder behind it, get a lot more velocity, a lot more energy. The turkeys sound like they're really excited about this. They know it's not a turkey gun, so they're okay with it. But anyway, this can be chambered in ARs, bolt guns, not lever guns so much because it doesn't have the rim for it. Somebody might try, but I don't think it's going to come out in that. But single shot guns, like maybe a CVA Scout, things like that, that's what you can put this in. So this is gonna be good for straight wall hunting states where shooting deer with a straight wall is all you're allowed to do. You're not allowed to use bottleneck cartridges like 308 or 6.5 Creedmoor. You're stuck to these straight wall cartridges. So you're dealing with 450 Bushmaster, 444 Marlin, 350 Legend, and now 400 Legend. So a lot of people have talked about this cartridge. Nobody's been shooting this cartridge except for us because thanks to T2 Armory having fun in their machine shop, T2 Armory is the people who make the Bushwhacker. You definitely want to check that firearm out. And this is not a shill for any company or a sales pitch for any company because they're not making these for sale for the general public. This is just something they did for fun and they were nice enough to let me borrow the upper. So I have the upper and we have been shooting things kind of along the lines of hand loads with handgun bullets. So we did a 200 grain XTP and that was pretty amazing that we did that in our first video. We also did in that video a 240 grain hard cast bangle bullet that was really impressive. And more recently than that, we've done a 320 grain hard cast Bengal bullet. You'll notice that's a lot longer. I like more lead, more weight, more thumping power. We've also done other videos where we've taken various other handgun bullets and put them into there just to see what they would do. Even though we know that the handgun bullets are just gonna pretty much destroy themselves upon impact. But we did do an extreme penetrator and that was not a destroy itself on impact. We have plenty of other ones that we're going to do. But in the meantime, let's check out what Winchester actually has out. So this round, let's see if it lives up to what is printed on the box right here. And that's supposed to be a muzzle velocity of 2250. Now they say this is achieved with a 20 inch barrel. We have a 16 inch barrel here today. And I don't know how many guns are gonna have 20 inch barrels. That's gonna be depending on what kind of gun you have. But hunting wise, I, I'm assuming that there's gonna be probably a fair number of hunting rifles, bolt actions that might be 20 inch, maybe even longer than that. But for now we have a 16 inch barrel. The energy that they claim that we're gonna get is 2,416 foot pounds. So we'll see if we come close to that. We've had some pretty good thumpers on gel so far. And we know that this round is definitely, this cartridge is gonna be a hand loader's dream because anybody that likes 40 caliber, 10 millimeter, and they've been wanting to supercharge it, the 10 millimeter magnum-ish type of idea, this is it right here. This is a super 10 millimeter magnum. So whatever you wanna call it, this is 10 millimeter tops as far as what we can stick in an AR-15 magazine, the length. So I will show you that right now. This cartridge has been designed to be able to fit in the AR-15. So that's the key, is getting it just short enough to fit in there. When we put the 320 grainer in there, that's even a little bit longer. That's about where we top out, right there. So that's one of the beauties of this cartridge, is that if everything goes well with the rifles and the magazines, and it's all compatible, then we should have an AR-15 thumper in 10 millimeter. For use for home defense, hunting, fun, whatever you can think of. I know a lot of people are talking about hog hunting. I don't get to hog hunt, but it sounds like a lot of fun, especially with a rifle like this. So the first thing I think I wanna do with these is just smack steel. We'll make sure that my zero is somewhat there, see what it sounds like on steel, and see what it feels like. The loads that we've been making have been pretty stout in the shoulder, so we'll see what the factory stuff feels like. After that, we're gonna put it through a chronograph if the sun cooperates, and we're gonna put it on paper for consistency and accuracy. Then if everything goes well there, we're gonna put it into a brand new 10% clear ballistics gel block. All right, we're about 30 feet off that steel. We have five rounds loaded up into this 350 Legend mag. So it's a 350 Legend shooting 400 Legend. Let's see how it goes. This is the first time I've had a decent quantity of ammo that I've been ready to expel, like just let go. So a couple people have said that they want to see multiple shots. <laughs> I just didn't want to use multiple shots with the precious little ammo that we have. Now that we can actually get factory ammo, let's see how it goes. Chambered the first one just fine. Got 
It's a pretty good thump. That's not as big of a thump as we had with some of our hand loads that we've done, but I can see on the target it left a good big splash. So one of them did hang up in the magazine. Like I said, that's a 350 Legend magazine we're using. But we did knock down a target. That was fun. And I think it's hitting them pretty good. I see some good fire coming out of here. We don't have a flash suppressor or anything like that. But I'm not going to worry about this last one that's in here. Let's go look at the target. So that was a pretty good wallop we were getting on this steel. I wasn't taking time to get super accurate shots. But they were good hits. And you're able to get follow-up shots, especially with a red dot. Each one of them put it put a decent nick here in this target kind of like a dent not necessarily a nick not not like a green tip ammo would nick it but it's got a little shallow dent this is half inch ar500 steel so that's a pretty good thumper i'm gonna say as far as home defense yeah this is gonna if you had a suppressor on it that'd probably be a lot better but around the farm around the property whatever a general if you're gonna have this gun for hogs and you might have it for coyotes or anything else you might approach or that would approach you in general though against two-legged critters that's kind of like seems like this might be an all-purpose type of a gun caliber cartridge whatever you want to call it so let's move on to more testing but just initially for home defense personal defense this is going to be one heck of a thumper all right now i'm going to put three shots or maybe five through the chronograph into that paper let's see how accurate we can get the red dots are totally zeroed but we can still get a group Let me go check the chronograph. 2115, decent hit. Let's look. 2189, and pretty much put a hole in a hole just a little bit to the right of it, I think. All right, let's look again. All right, 2019, and I got that one strung down here a little bit. So basically, one, two, three, one, two, three, something like that. So. I'll leave it at that as far as accuracy. Good enough for me for now. We're up close, so it's not really going to matter. I'm not like shooting this at 100, 200 yards or anything like that right now. So up close accuracy, it's only going to tell us so much. And I'm not even on bags or anything like that. But not bad for now. All right, we're about 30 feet off that chronograph and block. This should be really interesting, especially after seeing all the other rounds that we've put through there before we get to the actual 400 Legend. I'm anticipating... I'm anticipating we don't even come out of the first block, which is 20 inches, but that's my bet. You guys take your bets. I think we're going to go right to the end of the first block, and I think somewhere in the middle this thing's going to come apart, but let's see. That took the block for a ride. And I can't even see the velocity from here, so let's go look. 2130, so that's a little bit short of the muzzle velocity that was advertised out of a 20 inch barrel, but still not too bad. So I had to go wash the block off, but before I put it back down, I just wanna show you guys, it did crack the board here. So that's a pretty pretty decent piece of lumber. That's a two by 10 or two by eight, and it definitely cracked it the rest of the way through. I think it was starting to crack there, but it finished it off. Before I set it down, another thing I want to show you that's really cool is the projectile that's right at the end. I'll just go ahead and give you a little spoiler. That's what it looks like, the face of it. So that's no joke with the foot-pounds of energy, and we saw in the slow motion, that's a pretty significant impact. When it comes to what it did in the actual gel, we have a burn right here at the beginning where it just immediately started some kinetic energy situation because it burned right as it started to go in. We have your typical hollow point. When I say typical, I just mean the shape of the wound channel, the permanent wound cavity here. You see that typical hollow point disruption. We take that all the way to about 12, 13 inches, and then it starts to go to a more subtle track. We did start shedding. I should be a bedding person. I said that it would go all the way to the end and shed some, something in the middle. So it didn't come apart as much as I thought it would, but 
I like what it did. So it has that initial trauma, a really good smack. It gets 12 inches in. That's definitely within any rib cage. We don't know exactly how it would impact a bone yet, but it gets to right at about 19 or 20 inches. It might have been 19 and a half inches. And then we see from the video before, or the clip I showed you before, and I'll turn it around again, you see where the bullet landed. You can see from the top, it's smushed out like a total mushroom. So from the top, you're gonna to see just about the same thing. Sorry for the few smudges, but really, really nice initial 12 inch wound channel. So it's a viable cartridge. Now, we talked about the hand loading aspect of this, and that's where I'm just gonna make a really big time statement right now. We can't just judge this cartridge off of the load that we have right here, or even if they make one or two other loads. We have to wait till other companies make loads for this, and we have to wait till the hand loaders really get to knowing what they're doing and find the right projectiles to use. Solid copper is gonna be a big thing. Hard cast lead is gonna be a big thing. Hollow points, spire points, this and that points, they're really great, but sometimes the old traditional hard lead or the new age solid copper type of things, those can be utilized a little bit better sometimes at these velocities, depending on what you're hunting, what you wanna do, how much penetration you want. So we only have one offering so far coming off the factory lines that we know of. We've heard of another one, but really hand loaders are gonna make this thing awesome. And I think that the hand loaders are gonna teach the companies a thing or two of what to do with these rounds. Overall, I think it's a devastating cartridge. I think it'll be a great cartridge. I think it'll be great for states like Ohio. That's where I'm at. And I think suppressed, it would be a great inside gun possibly with the right kind of ammunition. We might go subsonic with this, who knows? They can do anything if they put their minds to it. But in the meantime, great cartridge. Glad we got our hands on this, but stay tuned because we're gonna do a ton more testing just like these little boogers right here. So I am hope I get all these right, but these are handgun rounds that we've taken out of normal 10 millimeter and actually 40 caliber handgun bullets or cartridges. And we're going to reload these into these cases. I have the reloading die sets coming. So this should be a 140 grain or 145 grain Barnes TAC PD 40 cal. That should be interesting. That's a solid copper hollow point. Then we have an Underwood loaded 200 grain hard cast. So that's the 10 millimeter version. They have a 220 and a 200. I believe that's the 200. We have a gold dot at 180 grains. Everybody loves gold dot. That came out of a 40 caliber load. And then we have a tumble upon impact 10 millimeter. And I think that's 125 grains. We have a Liberty Civil Defense, and I believe that that is a 60 grain. That came out of a 10 millimeter. So all these should do something totally different in the gel, and that should be really fun. Stay tuned for that. And as far as the factory ammo, we have this, and we can get more of this. So we're gonna be doing plenty of testing with the stuff that they actually put out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this series. And until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.